Welcome to the zone. With more and more people getting into the Stalker series, I keep seeing people asking questions about how dangerous the Stalker universe actually is. People ask how does it compare to Fallout or Metro, I even had one guy ask me how it compares to Warhammer 40k for some reason. I figured that it was time to do a video discussing why most people wouldn't survive a single day in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. If you don't know much about Stalker, check out my complete video history and my lore playlist for more information about individual threats. Before we begin, I'd like to announce that I've finally given in to popular demand and created a merch store. If you'd like to help me create more videos and would like to have some sweet shirts at the same time, feel free to check out the link in the description or here in the corner. The zone, while full of many things that could outright kill you, is populated by hundreds, if not thousands, of people who risk their lives for ideology, treasure, or for the simple fact that the zone is complete anarchy. These people group together into factions of stalkers that share common beliefs or that are loosely aligned together in their goals. For instance, the faction known as Duty is dedicated to bringing order and security to the zone at any cost. This puts them at extreme odds with another faction, aptly named Freedom, who wish to see free access to the zone, as well as leave it as it is and enjoy it. If you were to become friends with a member of either of these factions, you would have to be very careful where you decided to go and who to be friends with. If a Freedom member walked into an establishment ran by a duty sympathizer, they'd be gunned down in something resembling a Chicago gangland shooting on steroids. Joining the wrong faction or becoming friends with the wrong people could get you shot faster than a Gopnik trying to steal Babushka's jam. Now you're probably thinking, why don't I just stay away from factions? Well that's a great idea, but it still won't save you. As well as faction politics within the zone, you'll also have to watch out for factions that simply don't give a shit who you are. Bandits and renegades are common throughout the zone, and if you have anything, I mean anything, they're likely to kill you for it. Be it your shoes, a bottle of alcohol, or money if you have it, these guys will take it. Resources are scarce within the zone, and it's only reasonable to think that people in it want things. The more things you have, the higher the chance that somebody will want your things. You only have one way to stop them, and that is shooting them first before they shoot you. You could be the best shot in the zone, you could be the fastest, the strongest, the toughest stalker in the world, but it simply won't matter if someone gets a drop on you and empties 20 rounds of 9mm into your back. Let's just say for a moment that you did happen to survive all the encounters with bandits and all the other factions that hate your guts. While that is commendable, you still have to contend with the absolute worst people in the zone, Monolith. This pseudo-faction of brainwashed, heavily armed cultists is constantly looking for non-believers to kill or to convert. They will endlessly roam the zone, utilizing technology and the zone itself to travel far and wide. If you get too close to a team of their operatives, you can bet that you will be in for the fight of your life as they constantly advance in your position, shaking off wounds that would leave a normal man rolling in pain. They will not stop until you have either died, been forcibly brainwashed, or have killed every last member of their fire team. It's safe to say that you've got your hands full with all the gunplay going back and forth. But what if you did survive all the gunfights and the encounters with other people within the zone? If you did somehow manage to evade capture, torture, or death at the hands of your fellow humans, there are more than enough threats still left to go around. The innate world-bending properties of the zone, combined with ambient radiation, have produced some of the worst mutants to ever grace this earth. These mutants can vary from being almost harmless creatures that simply walk around and live their lives, to complete apex predators dead set on turning you into calories and poop. Some of these mutants have an extreme resistance to conventional weaponry, which you will probably be carrying. Mutants like blind dogs, mutabores, and pseudo dogs will be very common. These mutants hunt in packs and are extremely fast. They have been known to stalk and attack their prey as well as be highly territorial. Encountering one of these mutants on their own is usually nothing that a 30 round mag of 762 can't handle. But in a group, you had better pray that your cardio is as good as you think it is. Dodging the attacking mutants while firing at their mutated companions is difficult and tiring work. 
While the previous mutants are deadly in their own right, the zone has much more terrifying mutant threats to offer. While the local fauna of the zone have gone through horrible changes, they're not the only ones. Mutated humanoids will pose a much larger threat than those of the animal mutations. Starting out with the most entry level and least threatening of mutated humans, we have the zombie. These creatures are much like the ones you'd see in any other media. Slow, lumbering, and mostly unintelligent humans that have had their brains rewired. While they are like your typical zombie in many ways, they differ in that they are able to use weaponry. Even though they aren't the best shots, a group of zombies blind firing in your general vicinity is more than enough to kill you. Dispatching them is possible with enough damage to their chest or extremities, but headshots are the most effective. The effectiveness of your rounds and your well-placed shots into their skulls could be reduced, however, as zombies still wear the equipment and body armor that they had before their minds were wiped. Moving on to our next terrifying obstacle to your survival, we have the Snork. This unmistakable mutant was once a man, but is now something in between a human and an animal. Snorks travel in packs like dogs or wolves, constantly searching the zone for their next meal. Upon first glance, these mutants may look like wounded soldiers, goading novice stalkers into getting close. If you were to try and help one of these creatures, you would be met with a pack of snorks leaping through the air in an attempt to grab you. Their powerful legs are strong enough to propel their bodies meters through the air, as well as strong enough to cause significant damage with a single kick. Even though snorks are highly dangerous creatures, and have killed their fair share of stalkers in the zone, they are still nothing compared to the controller. Controllers are the first mutant on our list with psionic abilities. They can attack your very mind from a distance, causing even the most strong-willed stalkers to collapse in pain. If the controller's psychic attacks don't completely debilitate you, you will only have a short time to counterattack before it sends another wave of psychic energy in your direction. During your opening, you may find that you have a tough time lining up the sights on your weapon. This is not from a mild concussion or the result of a previous attack, but rather the controller's psi field. This field emanates from the controller in all directions, causing you to slowly go insane the longer you stay in it. Prolonged exposure to this field can result in a slow and painful death. The controller isn't the only psychically potent mutant in the zone, however. If you manage to avoid or best controllers in combat, you would still have to deal with the burr. This short and stocky mutant is tricky to fight as its main abilities are telekinetic in nature. The burr will begin by throwing objects at his target, attempting to kill him with blunt force trauma. If you manage to dodge the thrown objects and get an opening to fire on the burr from a protected position, you may find that your weapon is pulled from your hands and is flying across the room. The burr's signature ability will pull the very weapon from your hands, leaving you defenseless against it. Trying to run is also ill-advised, as the burr can drain the stamina from your body in an instant, leaving you unable to retreat from your attacker. If you manage to draw your sidearm or recover your weapon, you would be stunned as the burr simply blocks the bullets with its telekinetic power. While the creatures that we've covered so far are probably more than a match for even the most competent stalker, the Bloodsucker is by far the most dangerous of the commonly seen mutants within the zone. Bloodsuckers are humanoid in appearance, but usually aren't seen before they attack. These mutants are able to utilize active camouflage to sneak up on their victims from behind. If you manage not to go down to the Bloodsucker's sneak attack, you will still have a hard time fighting back. They're so good at blending into their environment that they can simply take a few steps back from their prey and become invisible once again. Only the most keen eyes and calm senses can detect the movement of a bloodsucker. And even if you can make out its location, you will still have to dump magazines of ammunition to bring one down. If you take one misstep or don't have enough ammunition, expect either to be killed outright or captured and taken to a nesting location where you'll be slowly drained of your blood over time. The last two mutants on our list are very rare, but their rarity is only matched by the danger they pose to you. The Pseudo-Giant is a massive hulking amalgamation of flesh and bone, one that is surprisingly fast for its gargantuan size. This mutant will have no problems chasing you down and crushing you under its massive legs. While anything in the zone will die if you pump enough rounds into it, the Pseudo-Giant is special and that you can rest assured that you certainly do not have enough rounds. Anything less than anti-material rifles, high explosives, or rocket-repelled grenades 
will not be enough to bring down the aptly named King of the Zone. Along with the Pseudo Giant, meeting a Chimera is also a death sentence. If you thought that the Snort could jump far, the Chimera can jump farther. The Chimera can pounce an unbelievable distance to its target. And when it lands, its massive claws will swipe at you. Most will die in one hit, being ripped apart like a rag doll. If the Chimera gets your scent, there is no point in running, as it is much faster than any human could ever hope to be. If you manage to dodge the first attack, you may sigh in relief as the creature runs just out of sight. But this is simply the beginning of a chain of hit and run attacks. The Chimera will pounce again and again until its prey is dead on the ground. Even though the people and mutants inhabiting the zone are extremely deadly and are all certainly capable of killing you, the most challenging enemy that you will have to face is the landscape itself. The zone is an unimaginable place where reality is bent to its limits. This is demonstrated perfectly by the existence of anomalies, which litter the zone. These anomalies are almost always deadly to stalkers, some of which can only barely be seen by the naked eye or require a specialized detector. Even while using one of these detectors, you are only warned seconds before stepping straight into a spatial distortion or a pool of acid that will dissolve your foot almost instantly. These anomalies take many forms, but some of the most deadly that you might come across are the electric anomalies that can discharge enormous amounts of energy, instantaneously stopping your heart and cooking your internal organs. The electro, one of the most common electricity-based anomalies, will spread across the ground only giving off a faint crackle and arcs of electricity. If you can avoid these electric death traps, you will still have to eventually contend with a mobile variant that is capable of flying across the ground, shocking and frying everything that it touches. If you manage to avoid the flying balls of electricity that are constantly chasing you, you will eventually encounter green pools that are softly glowing on the ground. Acid anomalies are pools of caustic material that will simply eat any matter that is thrown into it. One misstep through a field of these anomalies will result in your feet being dissolved by the pools of acid. These anomalies are easy enough to avoid when they're on their own, but more often than not, they will appear in groups. When walking through tall grass, these pools can be almost invisible until your foot steps into one, leaving you at best with acid burns in your feet and destroyed footwear. While the anomalies mentioned above are hazardous and can easily end your life, you'll still have to deal with anomalies that can literally lift you off the ground or that can crush you into a singular ball of matter. These gravitational anomalies are almost invisible, aside from the simple distortions in the air, looking almost like steam. One of the most deadly is the vortex. If you accidentally step into one of these, you will have only a brief instant to escape before you are trapped in a vortex of spinning force spinning you so quickly that your limbs are ripped from your body. Some of the more rare anomalies that can end your life are spatial distortions, such as the space anomaly. These anomalies are almost invisible to the naked eye. The only way to detect one of these anomalies is to catch the light refracting through the event horizon. If you are unfortunate enough to step into one of these death traps, you could either be teleported to another location in the zone, miles from where you started, or suffer a much worse fate. Most stalkers who enter these anomalies are never heard from again, as they are trapped in a pocket dimension which looks eerily similar to our own. As you try to walk out and navigate your way through your new home, you will realize that after traveling only a few hundred feet, you will end up back where you started. As you attempt over and over to escape, you will slowly lose your mind as you die of dehydration or take your own life. If these horrible anomalies weren't enough to convince you that you would certainly not survive the exclusion zone, the intense radiation emanating from the zone itself would slowly poison you. Protective clothing is required to traverse the zone, but even that protection is not enough to keep you completely free from radiation sickness. If you spend enough time in the zone, you will have to have a steady supply of anti-radiation medication. While some stalkers will stave off the negative effects of radiation sickness with alcohol, they will only survive in less affected areas before they finally succumb to their sickness. Last but not least, the most deadly events in the zone are still ahead of you. Spending more than a few hours within the zone will almost certainly put you in the path of the deadly storms that emanate from the very heart of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. While these storms are unpredictable and can happen at any time, 
Generally, every 12 hours, there will be at least one emission or size storm that comes your way. Emissions, or blowouts as some stalkers call them, are fatal to anyone not taking shelter. Strong winds and radiation will ravage the area, causing any stalker left outside to die from exposure. Size storms, on the other hand, will result in a pulse of psychic energy being pushed through the entire zone, eating away at the minds of those who happen to be caught out in the open. Those that are exposed for too long will fall to the ground, as their heads swell with fluid. After the storm is over, victims of a size storm will get back up on their feet as zombies, brainwashed and memory wiped, with only an overwhelming desire to kill stalkers. Over time, your mind will continue to degrade until you simply die. While you will have some warning before these storms come, you will only have minutes to get into a suitable shelter. Between the other stalkers patrolling the zone, the mutants that will constantly try to make you their next meal, and the anomalies that cover the zone like a minefield, you can be sure that you wouldn't survive the Chernobyl exclusion zone. But what if before you were sucked into the stalker universe, you had some time to prepare? How would you go about making sure that you were able to survive the zone and all that it had to throw at you? What gear would you take with you and why? If you had a few weeks to prepare before being thrown into the zone, the first thing you should do is physically train. Countless threats will keep you on the run and stamina is one of the most important things that will save you. While you only have a few weeks to develop your cardiovascular endurance, you should immediately begin a marathon running program and incorporate high interval sprints into your workouts. If you were intending on carrying a large amount of gear with you, you should also consider hiking and ruck marching to develop strong feet and knees. Without this physical training, you can be sure that a rogue pseudo dog or bloodsucker will make you his next meal. On top of your physical training, you'll almost certainly have to get a firearm and a sidearm. These could be any weapon that you can get your hands on in a short notice, but ideally, you should have a rifle that is chambered in a common Warsaw packed cartridge, something like 7.62x39 or 5.45x39. Ammo like this will be plentiful within the zone, and can be acquired from traders or from unfortunate stalkers that you come across. Your sidearm should also be chambered in something that is commonly found in the zone. A Makarov or Tokarev pistol would be ideal, as many stalkers carry these. Spare parts and ammunition will be available from other stalkers if you need it. Along with acquiring some weapons, you will need as much training as you can get. You will have to spend hours each day constantly learning the manual of arms for your weapons, as well as maintenance procedures that will keep your weapons operating in the zone's harsh environment. If you can afford it in 2022, you should also find a place to train. You should practice reloading drills and marksmanship. Now that you have the means to defend yourself and hunt, you will also have to develop fieldcraft skills that will be required to help you survive. These can take years to become proficient in, but you should immediately start learning the basics of shelter building, land navigation, and fire starting, as well as hunting and fishing. You should learn how to prepare game meat, as well as develop a campsite for long-term stays. Learning simple skills like how to make improvised cordage from grasses and other plants can be invaluable. A sturdy field pack should also be procured as soon as possible, as you will need a reliable method of carrying equipment through the zone. A waterproof backpack and a poncho should also be priorities due to constant rain. Ensuring that your pack is large enough to carry your needed items, but is also light enough to not constrain you, is essential. Almost as important as your pack will be some form of NBC and radioactive protection. A gas mask at a minimum would be needed, simply to protect your lungs from the radioactive dust floating through the air. A Geiger counter would be essential to navigate the hazardous radiation sectors of the zone as well as an anomaly detector, if you could get your hands on one of those in the States. You should invest in some form of LBE or a plate carrier that can be used to carry extra magazines, first aid kits, and other essential equipment. This will allow you to conveniently reach equipment without having to dig through pockets or packs during emergency situations. Medical training and supplies as well as building up a supply of anti-radiation medicine would be a priority, as in the zone almost everything is radioactive. On top of the radiation, Deadly chemicals and bacteria could have been changed by the unnatural energies of the zone, so water purification and sterile equipment is a must. You should have tourniquets, bandages, splint packs, and a variety of medications for everyday use. Canned food and water should also be carried as well, unless you're okay with only eating the food from mutants that you hunt and drinking irradiated water from streams and ponds. 
Learning the basics of Ukrainian and Russian phrases would be a must as well, simply to communicate with the local population. Communication could make the difference between someone shooting you and becoming your friend. Trading with the locals as well as getting valuable information from gossip could save your life. On top of learning how to communicate with the locals, you may also be able to communicate well enough to join a faction and gain support from fellow stalkers that share your worldview. Now that you've learned a bit about how the zone will kill you, as well as a few ways that you can prepare for a trip into it, be sure to like and subscribe for more stalker-related content. Until next time, I'll see you in the zone.